वेल्थ क्रिएटर भी देश को जरूरी होते हैं तभी तो वेल्थ बांटेंगे गरीब तक वेल्थ बांटेंगे कहां से रोजगार देंगे कैसे और सब कुछ बाबू ही करेंगे आई बन गया मतलब वो फर्टिलाइजर का कारखाना भी चलाएगा आई हो गया तो वो केमिकल का कारखाना भी चलाएगा आई हो गया वो हवाई जहाज भी चलाएगा ये कौन सी बड़ी ताकत बना के रख दी है हमने बाबुओं के हाथ में देश दे करके हम क्या करने वाले In Parliament last week, Prime Minister Modi said that the IAS officers have become predominantly over what I might call encompassing in every aspect of decision making, especially even taking over the corporate functions. This is an interesting point of thought because it's not the first time that Prime Minister Modi has made this comment. In fact, he's also not the first one to have made this comment. If we go back in history. it's actually uh, dr manmohan singh who started this discussion and uh, it became but uh, for various reasons even though he uh, discussed it with uh, mr virappa moili and uh, who presented the second administrative reforms commission report where a lot of these issues were discussed it didn't go for now because of various reasons primarily because of the fact that mr modi has a uh, is a much more assured majority he he is definitely the person who decides the government's agenda so when he says that he wants to do uh things in a particular way people sit up and take notice now this is where it becomes interesting because in the government and especially obviously in india the policy decisions are taken by the ministers but the executive is the one who are implementing those decisions and here is the prime minister saying in parliament uh, that he thinks that there is too much of a role that is being played by the permanent executive he colloquially referred to the ias because that is how mostly the officers are known but it's not just ias there are about 29 civil services at the central level which are directly recruited by upsc then there are other services which are recruited so their total comes up to about 45 services and these 45 services not just run the 101 ministries and departments in the center they also run the state governments they also run the municipal governments and they also run many of the public sector enterprises at the center almost all at the state and certainly everyone at the municipal level so overall it is a huge remit that these civil servants have the government in this budget has said that it wants to do what is called asset monetization it is larger than the disinvestment issue it means that the government is saying that i will not be in the business of running companies even if it's profitable or whether it's loss making i want it to be run by the entrepreneurial spirit of the country the entrepreneurs of the country it not only means larger space for the entrepreneurs but also means that the private sector would also be getting space in not just here but also in setting up new companies and if you remember that this comes along with the statement that was announced last year in the course of the covid pandemic by finance minister nirmala sitaraman who obviously was speaking on cue when she said that the government will be exiting all the public sector units and just keeping the barest minimum in the strategic sectors so if that is to happen then that would mean that not only would the political executive would be out but the permanent executive which is the civil services they shall also be out of it one of the easy answer to it is to say that you know it's difficult but why is it difficult the reason why it's difficult is while the permanent executive that the civil service obviously is seen as the face of these organizations the political executive also has not been particularly happy to let go ministers have used the public sector organizations as an extension of their ministry space it has happened in 
oil sector it has happened in power sector it has happened in uh, shipping it has happened in textiles you name the sector defense is a very great area in all of these areas public sector enterprises have been used by the ministers as their force multiplier and this has been through successive governments coal india was nationalized precisely with the idea that coal sector if it wants to be growing faster better then it needs to be run by as a public sector company the spate of nationalizations which started during mrs gandhi's time has found support in successive every other governments so it has definitely been a political call which the ministries have been taking the executive therefore is not the first what i might call obs line of obstacle the obstacle has come from the parliament of india which has held that it is good to run a company under government a very interesting area in this is the running of the ports all the ports in india are run not even by the public sector it is actually run by trusts but even these trusts are run by government entities they have been run as government uh, as government appointed ones so what has happened it is a combination of several instruments that have been created in all of these instruments the civil service has held the leading position as the ones who are running the trusts the companies the ministries people who have been responsible one must say is the political will the political executive and because they have not been willing to let go it has been comfortable and subsequently over the years lots of reasons come along now whether that is meant that the executive has done good job or bad job that becomes the secondary question because the ultimate issue was that that it was a question of control that some of the officers will end up doing a good job and some will not do a good job is not germane to the question because if you are saying that i am going to reserve a particular sector for the government then whether it will perform well or not becomes a subsidiary issue luckily what has happened is that over the past few years the government has realized that it needs to get out of this business of running companies it needs to get out of running of sectors it needs to concentrate its fire power on only few sectors and leave the rest to others two reasons for that one is that in india we are clearly saying that entrepreneurship is coming of 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 age so if entrepreneurship is coming of age then they should be given more play and if they have to be given more play then it just can't be less little like little sectors it can't be that what is the old word that used to be used the commanding heights of the economy those can't be reserved for the government so therefore it's a welcome realization within the government over the past few years that strategic disinvestment needs to be made and now strategic disinvestment not doesn't just mean in a com- few companies but it means over the entire pan of government's holding on of practically all sectors it is a very big decision and when that is made when that is made then the next stage that comes along is how to go about it and who will go about it because remember the same people who were running these companies are now being told that today you pack up your bags and some of you will actually be responsible for handing it over to others it's a difficult question particularly because of the fact that there is a large issue of political support to this entire thing india is a country where the per capita income is rising but it's still there are large swaths of areas where people do not get services and people often find that the comfort of getting a government service at whatever pace it comes along is still better than having to deal with what they feel the vagaries of the private sector an entrepreneur who will service so uh, provide it there are no very good reasons but it's difficult definitely in especially the poorer areas to be able to convince people and these people will have the right to decide on the vote every 5 years that this is a good decision that you can actually trust your neighbor rather than having to trust on a government even if the government is 100 meet kilometers away or 2000 kilometers away in delhi this is the challenge so it's not just a question of just letting go of is officers it's actually letting go of an entire mindset and that mindset had a reason to exist 
it is true that what he is saying uh, is absolutely correct. That is what is needed. There's no reason why the government should be running an insurance policy with a sovereign guarantee when that policy is in any case solvent for any insurance company, there's a regulator there. So the idea is therefore that we should basically start looking at expanding the role of regulators, allowing more and fair play among competing entries in the in, 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 the, in the sector without the support of sovereign guarantee and offer sovereign support where there is needed. Again, as I said, those are sectors like health, education, food. Those are the areas where it's needed. If to do that, the government obviously will need to draw back its pool of officers from areas where they are now deployed, which they are frankly not doing a great job because it's not necessary. Even if somebody has run a company well, uh, first of all, many of those institutions don't last. The good making, the good loss, the good uh, profitable ones can soon become loss making ones, depending on the entry and exit of the chairmen. So that's 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 not really needed. What is needed is the government to be focusing its attention where nobody else can come in and will be willing to come in, which is basically a the creation of the soft infrastructure sectors and building up of the hard infrastructure sectors and then setting out. So it is in tune with the budget priorities. The budget is also talked about asset monetization where the government will be building projects and then handing it over to the private sector. In the social sector, it will not be handing it over. In the social sector, the government will have to run them. You can't run a government school in the private sector. There can be a competing private school, but it is the job of a government in a democratic country to provide health and education support to the people who cannot otherwise provide for it, who cannot otherwise get it. So that is the way lay of the land. Is it a difficult one? It is. Is it an impossible one? No, I don't think it is so. For the reason is that this requires, first of all, a political change that the Prime Minister said it in Parliament and stirred a debate is a welcome thought, is a welcome process, but it needs at every ministry, in every person, at every level, to be followed through consciously, rationally, with decisions that are needed for the country to be able to take advantage of it. Uh, just to end, uh, there is an organization in Nizamuddin called Hindustan Prefabs. You won't even have heard about it, but it's a government-run company which creates prefabricated structures, which has actually created none of those and is the oldest public sector unit in India. And nobody knows about it, but yes, it continues because even that is so difficult to sell off. It's interesting that the current farmers' agitation has also got something to do with uh, what was said in parliament by the prime minister. The farmers in Punjab and Haryana, what are they saying is that whatever they produce should be bought at a minimum price, support price, by the Food Corporation of India. Now, who's the Food Corporation of India? Again, a government-run entity. So, essentially, even though no one will say that farming is a public sector organization or a public sector work or a government-run work, the end result of it is becoming that the wheat and the rice that will be produced, of course, there's also demand to expand it to other crops, to be bought by the government. The government sort of buffers them against price volatility. Now, it's not surprising that the farmers are making this demand because the demand because the idea that the government is the one which will provide support is so pervasive that even in a sector which is an entirely private sector dominated one, obviously farming activity, the end result is sought to be secured by government support. And again, it is because of the fact that successive governments have, have pushed this idea that ultimately it is the government which will act as the Maiba. This is why even an out and out private sector uh, enterprise wants its life to be protected by government administration, by government running a price support scheme. It's, 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 it's all those who are criticizing it, and of course there's reason to criticize the demand, have to also factor with the fact that this is also linked to our disinvestment dilemma, that we think 
that if a government comes in then that is the best outcome for everybody concerned it's not the best outcome for everybody concerned it only expands the role of the civil service it bloats it whatever the farmers would get in terms of the price support will also be neutralized by the rest of the country by the cost of running those huge farm things and also by the cost of the bureaucracy that will be needed to run such an enterprise If you like this video share it and subscribe to Business Standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on YouTube Twitter Facebook Instagram Telegram and LinkedIn